Welcome to another edition of Q&A with Pastor Andrew F. Carter. Today, I have my lovely co-host, Journey Lynn Carter, and my amazing wife, Kyra Lynn Carter, here on set with us <laughs> today. Give them a round of applause. Welcome them in the comment section. <laughs> Let them know that you are grateful for them to be here. Today, yes. we're going to talk about a lot of fun stuff, so stay tuned. How, how are you since Journey's come? Like, how has life been? anything tough difficult expected unexpected tell us a little bit about it so it's been interesting i love it i love being a mom i feel like they don't tell you how great motherhood is mm -hmm. but obviously i am also a first time mom so there's so much to learn there i have to know you know how to feed her when to feed her um she grows so fast like homegirl went from like two ounces to four ounces in probably like a week and she will yeah. refuses to eat anything less at this point um but yes we i stay up in the middle of the night with her there's all these new things that i'm learning but it's really fun and a joy actually that's good well what is what has been hard anything been hard or unexpectedly hard i know and i, I ask that because i'm there I get to, I, I know the truth. And, and what I'm trying to do here, I guess, is uh, I don't want to be fake. I don't want to come here and have to put on a smile and act like everything's good. Like, let's be raw because that's what people long for, right? Is everybody gets online and they get on social media and they're just like, oh my God, here's the highlight reel. The baby's been good. Can we talk about the poop up the back, the poop up the front of the diaper? Can we talk about the late nights? Can we talk about the arguing between the two of us? Can we talk, yeah. can we have a real conversation yeah. about yeah. that? So, I mean, what, what has been hard and feel free, throw me under the bus if need be. Um, What's been challenging? I just, I have to think about it. Uh, challenging part is, um, I guess I would just say like the more, like we've talked about it, you know, like, I, like you kind of continued into your own routine. And yeah. I felt like at first we came home and I was just like, it was just like me, not that you weren't participating because you right. obviously were, but right. there were, your routine was still consistent. Yeah. You were still able to get up and do coffee and prayer. Mm -hmm. You were still able to go to the gym. You yeah. were still able to go to meetings and ministry and do all these things. Um, but then it was getting to a point where you were just like, gone too much like because your life was still rolling and yeah. i was just like oh i'm gonna need you home because right. <laughs> i can't like learning this for a first time like i need you home more i need right. you and you've also done this three times so yeah. it kind of yeah. helps mm -hmm. when you're around um <laughs> <laughs> because you've done it a few times right. um but you also so i mean i feel like we've talked about that and then you definitely cleared up your schedule real fast when i was yeah. just like no like don't yeah. let me go crazy mm -hmm. um, i also feel like a lot of women go through an experience postpartum mm -hmm. when um, even though they're married and they're in a marriage, they still feel like a single mom. Yeah. And that's something I obviously never want to experience. And again, not that you would ever allow that to happen. Right. But I feel like because you check in and you're just like, hey, you know, what's going on? How are you feeling? I was able to be like raw and transparent, just like, hey, this is just getting too much. Yeah. Like, it's just way too much for me. Yeah. Um, and you were just that's like, great. OK, cool. Let me like clear up everything and just make sure that I'm attending to you, attending to her. Um, and yeah. so I personally don't feel like I've experienced any postpartum or depression, mm -hmm. but I can see how like single moms or again, women in marriages who feel alone or single because right. um, the husbands aren't participating, how that can definitely come about. Yeah, I would say a, a part of it, you know, um, is I just want to talk about how awesome you were uh, in giving birth and immediately yeah. after well because a lot of that attributes to like the first couple of weeks and how challenging it was for you is because after you gave birth you were trying to get up and make TikToks out of the bed i don't know if you remember that you yeah you, you snitched on me no i totally snitched i told you told the anesthesiologist like, yeah um excuse me um sir is she she's not supposed to stand up on her epidural huh? exactly and i was like exactly. excuse you i wanted to do a TikTok because <laughs> she gives birth and hours later she's trying to get out of the bed and like do TikToks, and i'm like like you just gave birth the epidural still like you're still like not feeling it don't get out of the bed your legs aren't gonna work and she's like no but nobody's gonna Hold know on, wait i just want to say 
I'm not that crazy about TikTok. Okay, that's not what it, it is. It wasn't about TikTok. It wasn't. It wasn't about TikTok. It was about like you know you're an independent, strong woman, so you went out the bed. And yes, I told. I pulled out the snitch and Wessons, and I told on you as fast as I could because you weren't going to listen to me. Yeah. So I told the doctor, hey, tell her that she can't get out of the bed, and so you didn't. But just for you guys to understand, that's how she was as soon as we got home from the the, the hospital. We got home and she's up. She's bouncing around. She's moving, and I'm just like. Oh, she's good. She's fine. So me thinking, oh, well, my partner is a superhero. I went back to the grind. Next day, I'm back on coffee and prayer at 530. I'm back to the gym. I, I'm making appointments. I'm having lunches. I'm making calls. I'm doing all of these things, not realizing that it was, it was almost like after you gave birth, you were riding this high that was kind of carrying you. And so all things appeared well mm -hmm. until like a few days after we got back, you were like, I need you here, bud, like get home. And so um, not only were you a rock star and just absolutely killed it, um, it, it also kind of pushed me out of the house. But once you said that, uh, I, I started canceling stuff and coming back home. But I would say for me, if you ask, because you didn't, but I'll just say that you did. What's been hard is just that, is the the sacrifice. Uh, you and I have, uh, we've had, excuse me, now that we have this beautiful baby with us, we've had so much freedom and uh, the ability to come and go and to do all of these things. And um, it has definitely been challenging as far as like, uh, schedule and routine because yeah, I'm a definitely. schedule and routine guy. I love consistency and routine. And so, I mean, even today, a part of my routine is I was going to work out. Mm -hmm. I didn't work out. I am not an easygoing person when I don't work out because I, I'm, I'm high strung and working out is like my therapy. So when I don't get to work out, when I don't get to do those things, I'm short, I'm irritable, I'm cranky. Uh, I'm, I'm even like a little depressed, honestly. Like I get down because the neurotransmitters, the endorphins, all of those things that happen when you work out, uh, they give me a boost. And so it's been hard saying no to the gym. I've missed the gym more in the last three weeks than I have in my entire life. Yeah. <laughs> in, my, in my entire <laughs> life, like literally in my entire life. And so uh, it's that's been a hard transition. I mean, even trying to work out in the garage yeah. to try yeah. to make up for it. I did 100 burpees like, yesterday and I was in the, like that's how desperate I was for exercise. I did barefoot burpees in the garage, 100 of them, kettlebell swings, just anything and to get that fix. he doesn't clean his feet when he comes back in the house. I didn't say throw me under the bus, tell all everything. <laughs> you know, tell the people I got dirty feet up in the house. <laughs> he goes straight to the shower, but that's not the point. <laughs> That's you know? wild. <laughs> Tell the people how you really feel. This is crazy. So I, I'm I, like, <laughs> she said, I the, our garage is clean, but it is not that clean with them car tires, you know? Yeah. And who knows what they run over. Okay. And now they're on your feet. Yeah. And then you're dragging in the house. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Can we get back to the baby? Yes. So. <laughs> oh, I'm talking about my bare feet. Uh, whose feet does she have? Her dad's. That's right. Speaking of feet. Okay, we're not weird feet people. Like, calm down. <laughs> and it's Speaking not that feet. his feet are not good looking. Just oh, they're horrible. They look like Fred Flintstone's feet. They're they're not pretty. They're not pretty but feet. But I would say that I have kind of cute feet. Nobody's ever asked me for pictures of my feet. Let's <laughs> put it that way. Nobody's nobody's like, yo, let's shoot them feet pics. It's just not that. And so yes. Our daughter does have my feet. She got his feet. She got his looks right now. But I'm hoping by the time she's a toddler. Yeah. She looks like me a little, a little somewhere. She don't have to. So that's the challenges. Any new other challenges you would say? Oh, there's a whole bunch of them. There's a whole bunch of them. But, but what's good? What's one thing that was maybe unexpectedly good that uh, has, has come from her? Oh, everything. Give me something specific. Oh, we I, know. I know. That's what I'm saying. I wish they tell you how great motherhood is before. <laughs> I waited to my 30s to have kids like all my 20s like I just didn't want any kids I just made sure that that didn't happen so in my 30s I was like okay well obviously now I have a husband so I'm just like okay that's good that's a good well, you start. know what? I love the fact that we waited so you and I actually agreed to wait a few years in marriage before like bringing, begrudgingly bringing a baby <clears throat> into this world so I'm love the fact that we got married and we like totally enjoyed ourselves and the newlywood stage and we traveled we done a lot of traveling um so i love that but then now having her especially like my first baby 
Mm -hmm. It's just been like amazing. And I think honestly, just waiting mm -hmm. for that, not that everybody has to wait in their thirties, everybody has their own prerogative, but um, just kind of waiting and experience that in my thirties as I got a chance to experience so much in my twenties, it has been great. So that's part of the goodness. Um, so the late nights and the cryings and all of that, I feel personally comes a little bit more easier because it's also been expecting, like I expected, I expected these things mm -hmm. being a first time mom, um, but I was prepared. Yeah. And I feel like yeah. that's kind of important, the yeah. preparation of it. You've done a great job too, by the way. You know, I've, I've raised a few kids. Yeah. Uh, and uh, what I can see is that you're you're doing an amazing job. Oh, you're doing a great you. job. Um, Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I was surprised, I was surprised about uh, as, uh, about how resilient and how quick you picked up motherhood mm. um, not it's not it doesn't come easy to everybody and uh but i think that you've done an amazing job uh, of that okay. um, one thing that surprised me is is how how much tension there actually is though in the marriage like a baby it, for all intents and purposes i would say that the baby is the easy part mm -hmm. she's she's great like journey is is great uh, she only wants a couple of things right she wants to eat she wants to go to the bathroom she wants to sleep mm -hmm. it's not it's not rocket science but I think that the the thing that surprises me the most is the amount of tension it can create inside the marriage and how you have two people fighting for their own identity, their own freedoms, and then insert this baby that requires so much time. I think the thing that surprised me the most was how much uh, it has placed tension on us and in our relationship. And again, by no means is our marriage falling apart. We have a strong marriage and bond. Um, but I can only imagine the tensions that it places on individuals who don't have a good relationship. Because if it's already pressing us and we have, we're like best of friends, right. if we're struggling and wrestling in that, I can see why the divorce rate's so high. I can mm -hmm. see why people uh, leave and, and go their separate ways. It makes sense because without a strong foundation, and our foundation is Jesus, yeah. without that, right. I couldn't even imagine you know what, what people are going through. Yeah, yeah I agree with that completely. I feel like the both of us, but we knew this kind of from the beginning, like we were definitely equally yoked, mm -hmm. knowing that tough times are gonna happen, we're gonna go through things, we're gonna experience things, and then you add a baby on top of that. Oh, um, I feel like the both of us definitely keep Jesus first. Um, mm -hmm. We always put him first, which allows our foundation just to be really strong. And that's why I think personally, we kind of handle that well. So even if there's tension, we handle it so extremely well. Most it's of not time. like, it's not, yeah, most of the time. Most of the yeah, time. Yeah. <laughs> most, of, most, of, most of the time. Most um, of the time. But we do handle it well. Like just our foundation, putting mm -hmm. God first um, and really truly meaning it, not just saying that. I know even there are Christian couples who have, they'll just say that like, oh, we keep God first, but then they go home and they, neither one of them are really doing that or that our right. fr like our firm foundation is on um, Christ. It is one of those things that even through the hard times and the tough times, you definitely have to keep God first. Um, so I feel like that's kind of something that we kind of wrap our minds back around. We're not perfect by any means, but we definitely come. No, we were this. fighting before we came over here. Yeah, we were definitely. And not fighting, but arguing, just trying to get everything wrapped up and trying to get, you know. There's so much going on. There's so much going and on. It doesn't help when we also have chaotic lives. Like mm -hmm. when we're like running things, running ministries, you know, um, having podcasts, doing interviews and everything before it just, and then with a baby in the in between time, like, okay, well, you feed her because I gotta get ready. Oh, well, you know, and it's just I'm like, trying to cook. You're trying to cook because, <laughs> because I haven't, you eaten haven't eaten all day. And if I'm I don't to, eat, yeah, it's yeah. just like the whole, it's the whole thing. Everybody so. needs everything and they need it now. <laughs> and then you've got, you know, and this, I, I, I wanna start, I wanna say this, that we are so blessed and grateful for the life that we live. Yeah. Um, and I'm blessed and, and grateful to have you as my wife and the mother of my baby. Uh, baby mama. My baby mama. but. Uh, the life that we live requires a lot of us yeah. and the ministry that we're uh, leading and the books that we're writing and the podcast, like you said, you mentioned all the things that we're doing. Um, it requires a lot and a pastor is a shepherd. And so we have a lot of people relying on us, mm -hmm. looking to us, mm -hmm. uh, wanting, you know, our time and our energy and our effort. And, and we love people. So we want to be that for them. But, uh, with all of those things, and then you add something that requires all of you, all of you, all of you yeah. it creates the perfect storm for a lot of stress. And when we're already high stress people, uh, and we operate well under high stress, we're clutch, I would say that we're, we're pretty clutch people. But when, 
you you add all of this together, uh, it definitely uh, makes it challenging. It creates a new challenge um, that we welcome, and I believe that we're handling well. But you know, I just I, I just want to be I just want to be honest and real. I want people to see that you know, uh, no filter, no no Photoshop. We're not here trying to paint this beautiful picture of oh, it's just us and Jesus and everything's going so good. <laughs> Like, no, you know, we, we, we still argue. Um, we're, we're by nature selfish in instances where we just want to be alone with our thoughts <laughs> for a second. Uh, we, you know, there's people everywhere. It's just like, you know, we're human. Yeah. We're human. For sure. So what advice would you give to um, new parents in relationships, um, you know, and having a new baby? And what's some advice you would give them? The advice I would give to new parents is make sure that you're taking time for yourself and making making sure that you're taking time for your spouse. Um, one thing that my wife communicated to me is that she didn't want to lose her identity. She didn't want to just be the baby mom because uh, everybody's asking, how's the baby? How's the baby? How's the baby? But no one asks, how's the mama? Like, how's she doing? What's going on with her? And she communicated that before the baby. She, she showed me about a dozen TikToks where the moms were just, uh, you know, feeling left out and had lost their identity. So. Uh, be very intentional. Okay, mama. Oh, okay. Okay. Are you talking on the mic? You got something to say, Jenny? You got something to say. So I would say be very intentional about, again, resting for yourself, filling your cup, taking time for yourself to get rested up. I would tell uh, a new mom or dad to clear your schedule. Um, I, I could have done a better job of, of clearing my schedule. And if people don't understand, like why you're off the grid for four weeks or five weeks, um, that's on them because you need to Definitely. dedicate your time and your energy to, as a husband, supporting your wife and your baby and uh, making sure everybody heals up and, and gets on the right foot. So that's what I would personally say. What, what would you say? I'm more curious about what you'd have to say. Um, for me, being a new parent and an, any advice I can give to a new parent, uh, I don't know if it's necessarily helpful, but I he mentioned everything about like taking time for yourself and though even those moments can be hard um but it is what it is like be very transparent with your partner and don't feel um because i actually do this a lot i try to not say something to him because i want him to have time to himself um but then what's happening is just like everything's kind of building up i need to be more i need to communicate a lot more when it comes to those things saying hey listen i need time for myself i need you to grab her i need you to feed her i need you to do these things because it's not like he just knows right especially if he's just like doing his own thing so communication with your partner make sure that that is very strong point um and don't ever feel like you're bothering them and if they ever give you a response like well that kind of is bothering them well they're a new parent or they're a parent period they might not be new but they're a parent so that's part of their job so you got to pass it pass it on until that kind of alleviates eventually things will get easier mm, i don't know they say it does it but <laughs> <laughs> it, i don't think it gets easier it gets different <laughs> that's what it is different it just looks I different. Say it. It's different yeah the challenges are exchanged so this is a, a great conversation um closing thoughts well so tell me the difference um you have three sons okay mm -hmm. three boys tell me what you would do is there anything you would do to raise a girl differently and is there anything so far that's already been different from raising them to now absolutely well first off i had my <laughs> my first kid 20 years ago yeah so the time that i raised kids we're talking 2004 teenage you know when soldier boy was still hitting the uh, you know uh, it was a whole different it was a whole different era yeah. and so now you've got uh well what's the the one girl's name um sexy red and you've got you got ice spice and you got all of these these new artists it's it's just a different Should i know them uh, no the fact that i do uh, just tells you that i i am staying aware of what's trending and what these little kids are listening to i just yeah heard those no names are there's that one meme where the little girls are in daycare and they're like hands on their knee oh, that uh -huh. one. Yeah. <laughs> and they're just yeah, wilding right, out all right, all right. yeah <laughs> i've seen the meme so i'm like no 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 i will take a belt off and oh my gosh not to get sidetracked but kids. there was this like tiktok shocker um there was a little girl she was like twerking right yeah. she had yeah. her hands on her knees and the dad came up so quick and was just like in her face didn't yell, didn't scream, just got in her face, and it kind of made, it scared, it startled her. Right. And she also knew, even at that age, that she was doing something wrong. Yeah. So even when he came up and, like, was right in her face, like, she, like, backed up and was like, 
And then he was just like, we don't do we that. We don't do that. And so Not she was just sense. like, she yeah. <laughs> cracked herself. Um, and the comments were so hit or miss. Like one of, the, of course, like half of them were, why is she so scared of you? You know, X, Y, and Z. And then the other half were almost like, that's exactly what dad should be doing. Like, absolutely not. We're not doing something like this. This is not acceptable. Right. Um, but it was just an interesting concept. Go ahead. So yeah, to answer to answer the question, <laughs> just because of the the length of time and how long ago it was, um, I was also a young dad. I was 19 years old, and so. Uh, I wasn't the greatest role model at that age. Um, the way that I behaved, the way that I treated their mom, you know, the way that uh, I, I just, I lived my life was, um, wasn't a life that I would want my kids to model. Uh, however, now I, I would definitely say I am a good role model in the way that I live and the way that I treat her mom is uh, is a way better than, than anything. So, um, I let my kids listen to music that they shouldn't because that was the music that I was listening yeah. to. And so uh, I let them on tablets and video games. And my kids are like spitting images of me yeah, when I was sure. younger. They're much they're much better, well more behaved, far more respectful, but they like a lot of the things that I like, such as sports and games and music and whatnot. Um, and so because I realized that kids, they, they do what we do and not what we say. Uh, I'm far more intentional about how I live my life because I'm going to really show her, uh, you know, the man that she's eventually going to be with. I want to be the model. I want to be her first love. I want to yeah, be the definitely. guy who, who she goes after. I want to model that. So it's going to look a lot different. Okay. So that that's right now. That was just the difference between raising then till now. What about what do you feel like it's already different from raising boys, even in these first few weeks of her life? compared to a girl is is there much different or right now just kind of the same stuff feed uh, them put them down <laughs> i mean look at her my my heart is uh i feel like it's it's gotten softer you know when the, the grinch when he uh gives the toys yeah. back <laughs> his heart <laughs> it grows a size and it's like that's as literally as soon as she came out my heart just grew so that's uh, what they say they size. say that like men with daughters is just like a completely different love than men with their boys, you know? Yeah, and yeah. Because so, you're raising a man and uh, yeah, it's just, it's different. It's hard to put words right, to. Right, right. When I raised boys and were there for boys, a um, lot more rough, a lot more, you know, kind of suck it up, tough it up, yeah. you know, loving on them and whatnot. But this is just, just so delicate and, and gentle. It's just <laughs> She's weird. a girl? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so interesting. What was instilled in me from my parents younger versus now is not much. So like my mom, uh, she left when, by the time I was four. So I don't remember anything of her except for like when she was like bad. Um, she, I mean, she was on drugs and uh, cocaine and she went crazy. And so I just remember all these bad things about her, unfortunately, even at four, which then eventually she got, um, you know, there, there was a restraining order from her. So I can't say anything specifically. Um, and then even like, even with my dad, there wasn't really any like strong relationship um, there either. So for me, it was more like, um, I can't really take, it's unfortunate, but it's not because God has everything so perfectly aligned in everybody's lives um, that I can't necessarily take anything like, it, from being raised by them. But what I can do is kind of do the complete opposite. And I know what not to do. I know what not to be. Um, and most importantly, um, you know, they didn't have God, I have God. And so everything I do when I raise her, when I look at her, when I love her, when I hold her, when I feed her, um, it's just so completely different because it's just like, I love my daughter the way I know how Jesus would love me. Um, I'm not going to be the perfect mom. I'm a first time mom too. Um, but I definitely know exactly what not to do. Um, and I'm going to be there for her and I'm going to love her and I'm just going to take care of her. And um, yeah, yeah, I'm excited because I almost feel like it's like a new book. Like it's a whole completely new book that I get to write because I know so many people get to carry on. Uh, things that their parents have given to them and you know like oh well my mom used to do this or my dad used to do this or you know we used to do these traditions or you know there's so much but to me it's kind of like a whole new book that the Lord um, has given me to be able to provide 
her in a way that's like a special signature parenting, if that makes sense. Um, so I'm excited. And I think that's why Andrew even said, he's like, you like jumped straight into being like a great mom. Like you, you got, you picked it up so well. Um, and again, that just reminds me having a fresh book um, to start parenting. And then what I give to her, she will be able to definitely instill into her kids. Yeah, that's so. that's the definition of a, a generational curse breaker. So you're breaking you're breaking the curse, you're breaking the cycle of abuse and absenteeism, you're breaking the the cycle of of you know kids being hurt. And so uh, in the same way I, I didn't have a dad. Mm -hmm. uh, my dad was non-existent. And so my kids have always had me in their life minus the 18 months that I was in prison, you know, and even then they still came and saw me. Uh, pretty regularly. According to them, they he's been gone their whole entire life. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's an inside joke. Uh, he went to go get milk. Uh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, uh, you know, my kids have had me. And so my hope and prayer is that they're even better dads to their kids. Of course, yeah. And their kids are better dads to their kids. And so, you know, we've started this new cycle. We've started this, this new path. Uh, in our families we said no more will that cycle continue and so we're now present we're here again not perfect no. still making mistakes but our hope is that um, our kids can learn and grow from our mistakes so that that cycle is now changed and yes. we're creating generational health mm -hmm. and generational wealth and uh, generational well-being emotionally and spiritually yeah. throughout our offspring and mm -hmm. for those to come so mm. it's good good question so I appreciate you just sharing, you know, your story and being open and honest. I know that even coming here, we were worried about, you know, what, what are we going to talk about? We don't want to be fake. We don't want to pretend, you know, that everything's great. We want we want to be honest and raw yeah. and we want to incorporate her. And so mm -hmm. I just appreciate you. I know that you're a blessing to so many women out there. Um, I know they've been asking you for your content. Where's your content been? And it's it's because it's a hiatus, right? You've been pregnant. You've been dealing stuff. But you guys, her, her content will be back. She will be creating more content. This is kind of the the preamble to that. Mm -hmm. But um, we just thank you for, for joining me. And um, I think in the comment section, if you guys have comments, uh, if you guys have questions, if you guys would like to see Kyra and I do more of this, I, I'm going to tell you right now. I like this. This is oh, this is yeah. kind. Of, I do. I do. This is nice because we this, can talk about. This it. is definitely my first like shell. Like I'm breaking my shell for the past like almost a year. Yeah. From when I found out I was pregnant yeah. to being pregnant. Yeah. So. Let her know in the rough, comments. A little shy, but you guys, if I do a few more, I might. I might have some. Um, open up some good information. You already this. did. You guys let her know in the comments how well she did <laughs> and encourage her. Let her know that you want to see her back here and uh, do me a favor. What questions, marriage questions, relationship questions, parenting questions, what kind of questions do you want us to tackle and talk about? Let us know in the comments section. Uh, but until next time, you guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for joining. Uh, make sure that you subscribe, turn on the notifications and share this. Sharing is caring. Sharing if is caring. This touched you or blessed you share this with somebody that you love you never know who might need a positive word so see you guys later